see some confusion from some people that don't know where to get started. And one thing that I remind you guys of is, rather than being confused with all the fractions, everything that's going on, think about this as with just numbers. What if I said 1 fourth, one fourth plus 1 third over, let's just say, you know, 1 twelfth? Or let's just make this, I don't know, 5 twelfths. Whatever. Now, if you had this equation, now again, we're just doing some simple numbers. Let's think about some game plans. We could combine our two fractions in the numerator, and then we'd have a fraction divided by a fraction. And we can divide fractions by multiplying by the reciprocal, right? So that is a perfectly fine operation to do. Now, last class period, if you guys remember, one of our warm ups was combining rational expressions. So could we find the LCD here? and then combine these two. That's what we did last class period. You literally just flip over your paper, look at the examples we did for the last warm up, and you could add these two. But would that make mathematical sense to add them together? Mm -hmm. Like that's fine. And then you just divide, which is flipping the fraction, right? Flipping the divisor. So you could go down that route. The one of the other routes that we talk about in algebra 1 is why even deal with doing fraction operations? Just get rid of the fractions. So another way you could do it is say, well, what is the LCD of 4, 3 and 12? 12. So what happens is as long as you're multiplying the top and the bottoms times the same value, you're not changing the fraction. right? As long as you do the same in the top and the bottom, you're not changing the value of the fraction. But now what happens is when I multiply everything times 12, well, 12 times 1 fourth, 4 goes into 12 three times. 3 goes into 12 four times. And then 12 divided by 12 is 5. So now I just have one fraction, which is 7 fifths. So I'm going to want to apply the same operation here. Instead of combining my fractions, which is perfectly fine. You can go down that route. But what I like to do is just get rid of the fractions. So rather than multiplying all of these to get my LCD, I didn't multiply all of these, right? Because I noticed that 3 and 4 divided into 12. So do x minus 1 and x plus 2 divide into this? Well, let's factor it to see if that's the case. So I say, let's see, all right, carry the 1, x plus 2 times x minus 1. Oh, yeah. One over x minus one plus three over x plus three. Oh, OK, thank you. So, but don't you guys notice that these two divide into this? Just like over here, 4 and 3 divide into 12, right? So now, if I multiply everything on my top times x plus 2 over x minus 1, and then the denominator by x plus 2 over x minus 1. Now, remember to put these in parentheses, because you have to apply distributive property. Well, this divide, um, let's do the numerator. So if I divide this expression times x minus 1's, the x minus 1's divide out, and I'd be left with x plus 2. If I multiply this times this, the x plus 2's divide out, and I'm left with 3 times x minus 1. For my denominator, they all divide out, and I'm just left with an x. So now I can just apply distributive property in the numerator, and I get x plus 2 plus 3x minus 3 over x, and then I can combine like terms one more time, and I get 4x minus 1 over x. And that'd be my answer. There we go. Yeah? No? Yeah. Good. All right. So let's go to 